these examples look really, really complicated, but I think that you'll see that once you get into it, they're really not that bad. You just have to keep in mind all of your exponent rules that you've learned so far. So our very first one is a lot of negative exponents, but we are raising things to a power, so let's go ahead and take care of that first. We would have to raise both the numerator and the denominator to that exponent. Within the numerator, we have a product. So that means that each one of those factors is going to get that negative exponent. So we would have r to the negative 2 raised to the negative 3. Power to power, we would multiply. So that would be r to the 6th power times s to the negative 3 raised to the negative 3. Power to power, we would multiply. So that would be s to the ninth power over. We're going to do the same thing on bottom because this denominator is also being raised to that power. And because it's a product, each one of the factors has to be raised to that power. So r to the negative 4 raised to the negative 3. Power to power, we multiply. So r to the twelfth times s to the negative 3 raised to the negative 3 would be s to the ninth power. Now how about that? No longer do we have any negative exponents to have to deal with. So now we can begin simplifying. Let's look at our r's first. We are dividing like bases, which means we're supposed to subtract the exponents. So that would be r to the 6 minus 12 is a negative 6 power. And s to the 9th over s to the 9th, again, we are subtract or dividing like bases, which means we subtract the exponents. 9 minus 9 is 0. s to the 0 is 1. So we can just forget about that. Another way to look at it, again, is that you can cancel out common factors on top and bottom. Now, we cannot leave a negative exponent as part of our answer. We need to correct that. So because we do have this negative exponent, and because r is technically over 1, we really need to move that into the denominator, do the reciprocal of it, so that we can correct that negative exponent. That becomes 1 over r to the 6th power. Much better. Now in this last exponent example here, we still have a lot going on, but I think that you're getting more comfortable with seeing problems like what we just did. So let's try and, and get this one taken care of. We have a to the fourth raised to the negative fi fifth, which would be a to the negative 20. Then we have b to the negative 7 raised to the negative 5, which would be b to the 35th over. Here we have 5 to the negative 2. I'm just going to go ahead and write that. a to the negative 2, I'm sorry, a to the second raised to the negative 2 would be a to the negative 4. And b to the negative 1 raised to the negative 2 would be b squared. Now let's correct our negative exponents. This a to the negative 20 doesn't belong there. It goes on bottom. So let's put it in the denominator. The b to the 35th, it's okay where it's at. It has a positive exponent, so we can leave it alone, leave it in the numerator. This exponent says that this 5 is in the wrong position. It needs to go up to the top. So we're going to uh, move that 5 squared up to the numerator. The exponent of negative 4 says that the a is in the wrong position. So let's move it up to the top also, correcting it. And b to the second is just fine where it's at. Now we can start simplifying. We like to put our numbers first. So let's put 5 squared, which would be 25. And then for our a's, we have a to the 4th over a to the 20th. So subtracting the exponents, 4 minus 20 would be a to the negative 16th. And our b's, again, dividing, so we have to subtract the exponents, would be b to the 33 power. Now we have a negative exponent, which says that that a is in the wrong position. So the final answer here would be 25 b to the 33rd over.